So I'm here today with Tom Walsh, professional squash player, uh, talking to Squash TV. To introduce myself, uh, I'm Chris Murphy. I, I work for Sporting Chance as an education facilitator and also the communications manager. Um, Tom, thanks so much for speaking to us today. Um, obviously, the reason for this interview is that you've been quite open, um, courageously open about your mental health and you've come to see us at Sporting Chance. Um, can you start by just giving us a little bit of context uh, context as to what you were like before you became aware that something wasn't quite right and, and maybe what it was that made you realise that something had changed with your emotional well-being and mental health? Yeah, it was. it's not like... Um... It's not like it wasn't like a flick of a switch, wake up one morning and it was like, oh, I'm struggling as such. It was um it was a build up of like a long like eight, six to eight months of stuff that went on. Obviously, like I think everyone in the past year has struggled with some form of something with, with this COVID, like the whole restrictions, everything. But for me personally, being a professional athlete, um march in like february 2020 i was like in canada playing an event come home like expecting to go out to bermuda in south africa to play more and then all of a sudden it was you must stay at home you must and you can't you can't do this you can't do that so i went from being a guy that literally tours the world playing professional sport to sitting at home trying to do some home workouts for a very long period of time and during the months of like April, March, April, like I didn't really process any of it. I was like, oh, I'll get through this, I'll get through this. But in reality, looking back on it, I was struggling. Um, but I also, during that time, I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, look, Tom, you're healthy. You're, you've got a roof over your head. You've got food on the table. There's a lot of people out there that are in a much worse position than you. And that's not me being big head or anything like that. But I, tried to put it in perspective um but during that time there was a build-up of like unease in my my mind but I didn't what obviously I should have now speaking to having spoken to counselors having spoken to a lot of people I should have shared that I should have shared that with someone but at the time because of the way I like you're doing okay compared to others I kept it all to myself which sounds silly um but obviously that from April may june july august september built up into some severe frustration um which did, i didn't really process as i said but then in october november time i had a couple of like just like three or four weeks where just everything went wrong like it was it was quite um just everything i touched just went rubbish really um some of it was I could control and I did the wrong thing and some of it was just completely out of my control and then I basically started to have um which I wasn't sure at the time what they were but I basically started to have like blackouts um and I had my first one I was actually finished training just like shower and I went to the showers and I just like stopped momentarily and like became unconscious for like 10 seconds didn't faint or anything I didn't fall over but I was like whoa what was that had no idea um, and they persisted for like 10 days like daily maybe one two a day and at that point I, I did a little bit of research I was like causes of blackouts and it was like are you physically healthy and I was like in my mind I was like well Tom you're physically healthy like I've never I've done the heart scans before with like the cry screenings and like, I have no reason to be unhealthy physically and then it was like have you been on any stress and I was like like yeah um so I, I basically went and saw a doctor um and they did the checks the health checks on me the blood tests the heart scans and it all came back fine and they basically had, like diagnosed me with experiencing psychogenic blackouts and yeah as soon as I heard that I was like right I need to go and get some help here and that's when I turned the corner and like I'm gonna gonna start this journey off and that's that's the that's the swing of things, really. Could you just tell us a little bit more about um, how that made you feel within within yourself experiencing this for the first time? I suppose it must have been quite scary. Yeah, yeah no, I, that's the word I'd use. It was, I was, uh, um, I was very scared. Like when I first had my first blackout, I, as I said, I had no idea what was going on. Um, 
my body was just shutting down on me. Like it was, well, now understanding what the blackout was, it was basically when you, your brain just overcooks and just like, no, you need to stop. And this actually makes you stop. But I was, I was petrified really. Um, and especially at that point, I hadn't shared it with anyone. Like it was just because of, as I said earlier, like I felt I was in a good position with amongst everything with other people. I just, I kept it all to myself. So then like, obviously I had to go from, if I was going to tell anyone, I was going to have to go from everyone thinking I was fine to, to actually like needing counseling, which was quite a big step in my mind. Um, and I was, I was very apprehensive about it all. Um, but yeah, the main thing I would be, I would be scared. I was very scared and worried, but yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously you spoke about the blackouts, going to see a doctor. It's kind of a physical manifestation of, of what's been going on. How did you feel when you kind of realized and reached a conclusion that this was actually a mental health concern rather than something that was physical? Um, and did that perhaps play into the, the reluctance to, to seek treatment earlier? Yeah, like I, I didn't want to do any, it was really weird. It sounds so stupid. And I guess unless you've been through it yourself, what I'm about to say would sound like, why would you do that? But it got to a stage where I realized it was all mental. Um, and like, I was fine physically, but obviously the mental side was affecting my physical side. But I, at this first time, I didn't really want to do anything to help myself. It was really odd. Um, and I, I can only think, I think only people that have been through that can understand where I'm coming from. Um, but it was, yeah, it was, I was anxious about potentially starting it off in case it didn't work out. Or I was very much like, oh, Tom, it's a phase. You can, you can sort this out yourself. Like it's very much because obviously like, until like the last year with obviously a lot of people suffering from their own, like mental, because everyone has a mental health at the end of the day. Um, like everyone has a physical health, but a lot of people have suffered due to the impact of COVID as I mentioned, but I was very much like, I can sort this out myself, which looking back on it, if I'd gone earlier, I could have saved a lot of trauma for myself. Yeah. Yeah. In, in terms of the treatment that you've been receiving, um, obviously you've mentioned you've been through that pathway because of the PSA's partnership with Sporting Chance. You've been seeing the counsellor within 10 minutes um, from where you live. Um, how have you found that those sessions have helped you? And also you spoke about how you were worried, apprehensive about it becoming public. I know you've chosen to make it public yourself yeah. now, but obviously the, the confidentiality factor, I suppose, yeah. would have been a big comfort to you as well. Yeah, I mean... it. I spoke so once I agreed to have um can't effectively have counseling I I I have a I'm very lucky in the fact I have a a close knit of friends slash well my my squash coaches are my friends as well um and I told a couple of people I obviously told my parents and things like that about it and by the time I got to the counseling session I was actually very I wanted to be there and as soon as I met my counsellor, Sam, um, she's a, she was amazing, well, she is and continues to be amazing and really good help to me. But like, as soon as I met her, I just felt there was a connection there where like, I fully trust you and I feel I can tell you anything. And I, obviously that sounds like what you should say and what you should do. But again, like, unless you've experienced it, like that, I can only imagine like what it would be like if you don't have that connection with your counsellor. And for me, like, as soon as I met her, I knew that I, I feel comfortable here and I want to be here. And so the sessions we've had, like, um, they've, I mean, the first session was a bit slow because like Sam, she had to get an understanding on who Tom Wolf was. Like she, she didn't know who me at all. So it was a very much like, I was telling her like where I went to school, like my friends is like, I found it like almost a bit boring because I'm very much like, I want to, I want to sort this out now. Um, but from session two, it was, a lot of help I we got some good stuff done I got a much clearer understanding of why I why why I've done certain things or why certain things have affected me in the way they did and from everything I said I went don't need to go into details on what caused me to do this um but when I think I said to her I asked her like are you surprised any of what I what anything have I done um why it's caused me to be how I am she's like in honest Tom like the stuff that you've 
you've convinced yourself that's happened or like has happened like i'm surprised you haven't suffered earlier <laughs> and i was like and that made, in some ways obviously it like wow like but in some ways it made me feel a better about myself because like it wasn't as much of a shock like every like as the stuff i've been through like sh i should it should affect me in some way like i'm not some robot um that doesn't have feelings like i'm trying to play professional sport while i was trying to like suffering with a mental health condition it's it wasn't easy um but the sessions with sam have been like amazing like I, I i mean i can't thank her enough really like it's really helped me to understand who i am and i've made so much progress after seeing her and how has that kind of transpired in your everyday life how have things been for you since you reached out for help i went through um i went through stages really so the, the first so Obviously I'd hit like a little bit of a low point what before I reached out for help and I went to see help and I made like a slow progress. And there was a couple of things that went on that were just out of my control. Um, and then I, I basically like, it's, I think it was over Christmas time just because like Christmas happened and like, like people stop for Christmas obviously as you do like over in this country. Like I, um, I always got worse than before. Um, I had a real, I had like a rut over Christmas. Um, where like I was, I was really struggling. I had like I started to bit, the blackouts didn't come back, but I was um, I had like a lot of other physical symptoms where like I, I couldn't sleep at all. I I was completely like bunged up with anxiety and stress. Like I'd lie in bed at night like just not sleeping, and then as a result of all the stress and anxiety, I couldn't then eat. Um, I tried forcing food down me and that didn't go well at all. Um, and trying to train to a good level after zero sleep and zero food, the, the sessions I then did in terms of my squash were just very substandard because I just wasn't recovered. Um, initially it got better, then it got worse. And then I went back to her in the new, new year after things, obviously we went into lockdown then but we like we made it into because obviously at that point we had a like a relationship we like we could do it over zoom um and since the new year it's been going so well um there's a couple of things in my life that i've changed um just i've got a couple of opportunities that have happened and i've really like turned the leaf i'd say which has been amazing for me one of the things that we see at Sporting Chance um, and that we're really keen to sort of get the message across and, and the PSA as well are, are really pushing this and promoting positive mental health um, in a really good way um, is that professional sports people often do everything possible to look after their physical condition and then often the mental side of it can kind of be left. And, actual, and actually mental health can be confused with um, sort of some of the mental attributes needed to compete in professional sport um what do you do on a daily basis now to manage your mental health yeah like so pre everything i i was one of them people i was like as long as i'm training hard physically hard like my mental i didn't i didn't really didn't think about as you a lot of athletes probably do which is obviously not a good thing and um, looking back on it, i don't know why i didn't do some of the stuff i do now but i was very much if you train hard look after yourself that way you, you'll be fine and for a long time that worked for me because nothing was going wrong in that sense too. But um, I um, obviously a lot, one of the things I do is attend the, the counseling sessions with Sam, which is obviously a major help to me. Like, like every, but I have them every about two weeks now just because I'm doing a lot better, but I was having them like every week, every five days at a point just to, and it was just that one hour or 50 minutes worth of time where I could really focus on like trying to help myself. So that's the one that's the major thing that I've changed and done differently um but I've read um I've read some I've read quite a few books just not that um they've been that intense but from like people that I almost look up to um and I've gone through similar and obviously in mind not as extreme as a, like I read the both Tyson Fury books obviously I a lot of people know about his like rise to the top and then his great fall and then his rise back and like just reading their stories it's like well you've overcome what you've overcome so like why can't I overcome what I'm currently experiencing and it's really like helped 
So like re reading, obviously, and I also like read a couple of like uh, fictional, non-fictional books, just so, just for enjoyment really, just to like get myself off of like negative news. Um, also like through like, obviously through December, like early January, like country was going into lockdown. So I couldn't, that meant like, no squash at the time for me again and I like I've always enjoyed running um and obviously going for a run as a squash player is a good training tool but I live I live in Brighton um I'm, I'm not sure if I've been to Brighton but it's like got obviously got the beach and stuff so I just basically like took myself out and not that I was going for like any form of like hard training but like it was just I went for quite a few runs just to get, get myself out of the house get some air like listen to listen to my music just like chill out and obviously it was like it was one it was good for like my training because I was like doing something which was at that stage I wasn't doing much just because I didn't feel like it um but also like gave me that mind space and I think it's so important like, it's one of those things now like I'm tra back training fully now like like Monday to Friday but like on the weekends I'm still like trying to do at least one run and if not I go for like a a couple of hours walk um just to like get that it sounds like it's almost a bit cringy because like it's very much like a lot of people are going about get your daily exercise and but I actually think it's so important just to like get yourself out like freshen up like even if it's like those it was obviously snowing like quite heavy a couple of weeks ago and I went for like a walk in the snow and it was just like it was so nice to just get out and get in that fresh environment um so that's been one of the major things I've changed because before like on like a rest day, I'd be like, I'm so tired. I'm just going to sit on the sofa, um, which is obviously as a, the, the, the hard training we do, like we need to, we need to have those down times, but it's been very good to like, to still being able to force myself to get out. And now I really enjoy doing it. And on those, on those walks as well, I've started listening to some podcasts. Um, one that was recommended to be by Sam, um, but a lot of, um, I, I can't remember the name. I think it's the Feel Good pro podcast by, I can't remember the name of the doctor, but the one of the guys that features on it is a guy called Peter Crone. And some of the stuff that he has to say like really sits well with me. And it's really helped like listening to those podcasts and like other people talking about their experiences. Like it's a bit different to reading a book and I never used to listen to them. Um, but now like I love them. Like it's really like, it gives you like I go on a walk I put the my put my airpods in come back and I've got like three or four like stand up quotes in my mind that I can take into my next week of activity and like just kind of like just brings you back down to earth which hasn't been nice to do and um the last thing I two probably two more things I've um obviously I'm young I'm 21 like I spend a lot of time like on my phone and stuff and like Obviously, like the last like year, there's been like a lot of like negative news surrounding like COVID and just a lot of like a lot of not great stuff to see. So like I I purposely made an effort to like unfollow those sort of like streams of media and like then follow new accounts. Like a lot of like I actually follow now like probably like ten or fifteen like mental health like activist accounts and things like that and just like so when I go on my phone I see that like beam of like light not without sounding too cringy again it's just like it's been nice to to see something that is positive news for a change and like one of the guys I I followed and actually messaged about it all is a guy called um Ben West who's on Instagram and like, I messaged him like he has like I mean I've, I'm quite young and don't have that many followers on it and like I'm not don't really care about that sort of stuff anymore um but he has like 50k followers I sent him a message saying like really like your stuff and he actually replied to me and like it was just like really nice to just have that like feeling noticed by those obviously he's like he's he's famous on Instagram but and obviously like he's, a, he's doing some good work on there and it's it just nice to like speak to someone like that that's making a difference and that's one of the reasons why like I wanted to do something like this like if I can make a difference to someone obviously like I'm a very small person in that sense to like help but if, if I can feel like I can make a difference to someone that needs it then I've done my bit as such um the last thing like I've 
tried to reconnect with a lot of like my older friends from like school because obviously as um when as soon as I finished school I turned full-time squash and a lot of them and my final years at school I was training like every other when I wasn't doing my school work I was having to do squash which is what I wanted to do and I still don't regret that at all but I like I lost a lot of um not lost but like a lot of my older friendships kind of like fizzled out because we just didn't have time so I've made a conscious effort to like try and speak to a couple of my older friends and it's been really nice just to like have those like almost like reconnect with them um which has been good for me because like it's like being a distraction from everything else that's been going on and like finding out what they've been up to and so like just speaking to my friends really which has been not that I've gone into any great detail about what's been going on the past like eight months of my life but like obviously they have we haven't spoken since school and stuff so it's been really nice to like obviously like they don't know how I'm doing as a professional squash player and like, I don't know what they're doing at uni or like are they finished uni like it's been nice to this have like that grounding again so yeah I'd say that's about what I've been doing to help myself so really good stuff really textbook stuff really as well like yeah. all the stuff that we would advise you know creating a healthy environment for yourself not just physically but digitally as well is really really important what's going yeah. into your mind is going to manifest in, in how you feel um you spoke a little bit about uh, speaking, obviously, to your counsellor, seek, seeking professional sport, uh, professional support through Sporting Chance, um, and obviously your kind of close knit family and friendship group that you've spoken to. Um, mm-hmm. But just to kind of finish off, really, you're talking quite publicly today. I think it was December when you put an Instagram post out and kind of went public about what you've been going through. What inspired that decision, and what was the reaction from within your sport and, and outside that as well? Um... It was, it was kind of like a, it was a very um, quick decision to do it. Like, come early, like, I think I put it out on like the 9th of December, which is quite funny because it's my sister's birthday, I did it. And I didn't tell anyone I was going to do it, really. Um, it was something I just did. Um, I was basically like, obviously, I'd been in training environments. So there's no fault of anyone there because no one knew. But like there were so many like conversations I've had where like no one knew anything was going on with me because I was very I only told like once the the black hearts and everything happened I told like my I told my best mate I told my parents and I told my squash coaches like that it was like four or five people that knew there was like Tom struggling and there were so many conversations I had with like people I bumped into at training and stuff like oh how are you you good and it's like yeah I'm good but I wasn't good. And I just was just fed up of just like putting that fake smile on. So I was like, it was just one evening I was just sitting at home. I was like, I kind of want to like tell someone like I'm not feeling great. So I just went on like a notes page on my phone and like drafted up a couple of my thoughts. And then I was just like thinking about the notes I've written. I was like, you know what? Like, why don't I try and like one, help myself and two, try and make a difference to someone else. So like, I turned those notes into a post. I picked a random photo of my cat. I didn't really know what picture to put on it. Like, uh, so this put a photo of myself. The picture's irrelevant, um, which is quite funny because one of the the guy that took it messaged, like, replied to the photo saying, "Like, nice day in Bermuda, Tom." <laughs> which is like, it was quite funny. It was taken in Bermuda, but um, yeah, it's just like it was very much an instant decision. Um, and when I posted it, um, I was then had I probably had like I had quite. a lot of um like comments on the post but I had about like 60 people message me like some of which like I'm close to and like knew some of which like had I'm close to and I hadn't told they were very like obviously they weren't like why didn't you tell me but they were like very like nice to me like we're always here like which is as someone that has been struggling with like anxiety and stress it was like obviously so nice to hear and there's some people like I literally hadn't spoken to in like four or five years and they just like out the blue messaged me. It was just so nice to like have those messages. And there was one guy, I won't go into any names. There was one person that messaged me saying that they've been struggling um, with like what they think is, I won't say what they've been struggling with, but they were like, by you say, putting this publicly, it's like, I feel now I have the confidence to go and talk about it to a counsellor. And that, that I was like, I didn't expect it to help that much of some but like that message like I stopped a minute I was like wow like me putting that out as me meant you can go and get help like 
that's like I felt amazing for like that second. Obviously, like I set out not to like obviously what is like it's so good that he's done the right thing by going and seeking that help. But by me putting out that post, like immediately I felt so good about myself because I've like literally helped someone to start their process off. Um and that's why like as I say again, like that's why like me speaking publicly on here, like if if it helps one person, I I feel so good about myself. And that's not me being like a big head or anything like that. It's just it's one of those things that if I'd seen something like this from another squash player or another athlete, when I was umming and ahhing about seeking help, I think it could have pushed me in the right direction earlier. And that's that's really why I'm doing it. Yeah, and there's nothing more powerful than than hearing someone's you know genuine story of going through that kind of stuff and getting help. Uh, we can all sort of tell people what we think they should do, but actually hearing a, a human story of someone that people can yeah. look up to, it really is powerful. I'm going to put you on the spot to, to finish things off here and just give you the opportunity really to almost directly help people and just ask what advice you would give to anyone, whether it be a fellow player, a fan, or just anyone watching this video that might be struggling with stress, anxiety, or any other mental health concern. Yeah, you, re you really have put me on the spot here. Uh, <laughs> I would say the thing that I did, which I wish I'd done sooner, was one, speak out. Just like speak to that close. Most people have like either their parents, a loved one, friends, family, like, around speak out to that close group around you no one's gonna judge you and especially for me like the, one of the main reasons I was scared to reach out because being I keep mentioning it being a athlete like there's a lot of like I was very apprehensive about speaking out because if I played obviously at the time I couldn't play anyone because there was no tournaments but like if it came back that Tom Walsh was weak for speaking out mentally I was scared that oh, my opponent's got a, like a, a one-up psychological on me, psychologically on me. But after speaking out and after going through what I've gone through and coming out the other side, I now feel stronger than I did before. And if anything, like if I can overcome what I've overcome now, I can definitely go and produce it on a squash court. Um, like that, that, that psychological battle on a court is nothing. And that's a really good place to, for me to be in now. Um, obviously so that's the main thing I would say um, but obviously like if you're not at that stage yet I'd be like do things you enjoy um, there's no point obviously if you're having those bad days there's no point punishing yourself but obviously I'm not saying like binge out or something like that but like it's like if you're really like not feeling it just like so there's no rush especially at the minute like when as a as squash of the sport there's not much going on um due to covid again but there's not much going on just like to slow down there's like be kind to yourself there's no point punishing yourself for doing all this like stuff and when the bad days come and the bad moments just like don't don't hide them obviously you don't have to like put do what i've done and take it out publicly to everyone because that's like that's been my personal decision that's how i've dealt with things but just accept the bad days when they come just like stop and like obviously don't just like get yourself into a negative spiral um but just recognize what what's happened to make you feel um feel bad or feel upset about yourself and then once you've like recovered and go back to it and like what what caused that and then if you can if you can address the cause i think you'll find that you're going to be in a better place because you are having a more of understanding of yourself as a human um so that's all i'd say really absolutely really wise words and i think it's really courageous of you uh, tom to first of all reach out for help but even more so to talk so openly about it and i'm sure that people watching this will take a lot of comfort and inspiration from your experience so thank you so much for sharing it with us today thank you